This is a very different kind of speech. It is a profane, vulgar speech, lots of scatological references, the number of sexual references. We do know also that he wasn't really a profane speaker. He didn't speak like that normally. He used to practice in front of right. the mirror. And look, the other wonderful thing that he does in this speech is the gift that he leaves them with at the end, is what you can tell your grandchildren. That when you your grandchildren, the the, when you, you're old and your grandchild is sitting on your knee and asks you, what were you doing during the war, the big war? Part of it is about the, the, the th great third army and part of it is about George S. Patton. No, George E. Patton. He doesn't even refer to himself with a proper uh, title. Yeah, look, that's, that's, this is another instance of what we talked about with the Chamberlain. Patton uh, is trying once again to dissemble, in, in part dissemble his superiority um, and make, make a team in which they are members of his team and he is one of them. And, it, and it's not just that they're going to remember that they fought with Georgie Patton, but they're going to swear like Georgie Patton when they're talking to their grandchild. And that I'm not so sure. Well, that, but that's what, what he has them say. That's, he, what, what he wants them to say is, 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 is to refer to him in the same way as he refers to everybody else. Look, the profanity, the profanity is also, the profanity is a way of cutting the tension, reducing the fear, and making them feel a team with him. They laugh uproariously, they slap their thighs in all of those places, and he makes them a team even before he starts speaking of the army as a team.